All right, everybody, Bryce here coming at you with another real quick crypto market update. I'm still in New York, uh, had a long weekend at an incredible conference. Uh, I, you know, I, I can't say enough good things about uh, what happened here on Wall Street this weekend. Seriously, like, honestly, almost every single bank uh, is here, and they're all talking about regulatory clarity. Not that's maybe coming, but that's certainly coming. I'm talking about folks from BNY Mellon, Citibank, T. Rowe Price, Goldman, Vanguard. Everyone, seemingly everyone, has got a crypto division now. There were heads of crypto from, from all of those places, and even Fidelity. I know I mentioned them uh, in one of my other market updates uh, down by the charging bull. Uh, now I'm up in my hotel room, just took my suit off. It's been a whirlwind of a weekend, but I was speaking to a guy from Fidelity, uh, and he says that their digital asset group went from 125 people just a couple of years ago to now over 600 employees in just their digital assets division. So to me, that sounds not like they're doubling down or tripling down. They're quadrupling down on how big they think this industry is going to be. Um, now, it was interesting. I learned a lot. And so I'm just going to kind of rifle off a bunch of, bunch of facts and figures that I, that I learned. But um, a lot of these banks were saying, hey, it's all going to start actually offshore where you're going to have non-currency, sorry, non-dollar currencies that are going to be fully digitized first before kind of the U.S. digital dollar kind of becomes pervasive. Um, they say that some of these foreign banks are within 12 months, they're totally lined up to be able to have in your bank account cryptocurrencies right next to your, you know, your Japanese yen or your, you know, German currencies uh, or your French currencies, all that kind of stuff, right? So you you have just about 12 to 18 months away from, from having side-by-side -side sort of access for some uh, people in, in foreign countries, but they said for the dollar, because it is the preeminent sort of pristine uh, currency of the world, it's got that exorbitant privilege of being the world's reserve currency, it's still about five years off. And this was, again, from some of those top banks that I listed some of their projections. So about five years for, for us in the States, but, but that's no problem because they said it's, it's coming, it's coming. And, and one of the reasons that they're talking about uh, crypto and particularly one theme was real world assets. Everybody was talking about real world assets, tokenization of assets, bringing them on chain. Um, some folks from, I'm not gonna say, I'm not allowed to say the name, uh, but a, a trillion dollar asset manager uh, said seven figures a year that they could offer in savings to their customers if they were able to tokenize their securities, have them trading 24 seven. So the cost benefits of all of these crypto blockchain sort of protocols for these large banks, they're realizing, hey, we could shave off a few basis points of back office sort of fees if we adopt these protocols. Now, a few basis points for you know a trillion dollar firm, you know that's looking like millions and millions of dollars. Now, there was a lot of fun conversations around fundamental analysis of cryptocurrencies, like what really is fundamental analysis? And, you know, again, uh, these are these are big banks, these are big Wall Street institutions that are talking about total value locked, meaning how much value is actually locked in this protocol? What is the active amount of developers developing on this platform? Is it going up or is it going down? Are people coming to the platform or people leaving? What are the amount of addresses or new users Interesting enough, there was a, there's a big conversation around uh, staking rates and mining rates. Essentially, you know, what chains are people staking on? What people what chains are people mining? These are the kind of fundamentals that they said. You know, it's a lot different. It's totally a lot different than uh, you know something like an equity. But it's here, and cryptos do have fundamentals. Another interesting thing was that um, there was really you know uh, a big highlight on the money printer, right? The whole money printer. One guy said it best, I'll quote him, I won't attribute the quote. He said, there's no stronger correlation than crypto and liquidity. Meaning the more money that gets printed, the more money that's sloshing around, the better it is for crypto asset prices. Um, and the money printer will be turned back on at some point. Now we're not sure exactly when it's gonna be. It might be after some kind of uh, world event. But interest rates are going to be coming down at some point here in the near future. So we're on the back end of that and more money is going to be printed, uh, which should totally rocket Bitcoin and, and Ethereum and all these other assets. 
Um, one of the interesting conversations was a, a couple people were like, well, what are we waiting on? Why, why isn't the bull market in full raging mode yet? Um, a lot of people said they're waiting on the next model, the new model for fundraising and distribution of, of value. They, they pointed to ICOs being the first one to kind of come up in 2017, then the DeFi boom in 2020 and liquidity mining and all that stuff. And we're kind of waiting on the next one. Now, another quote that I saw that I loved, uh, or I heard, I should say, was uh, he says, crypto now has a 0% chance of failing. 0% chance of failing. Again, these are from large institutional asset managers who are saying how wildly underallocated some of these big Wall Street firms are. So even just going 1% or 2% of that, that billion dollar portfolio, it could move the markets in a huge way. And there was not a single, and I repeat, there was not a single panel or conversation that I had that didn't talk about the Bitcoin spot ETF. Uh, this thing is hotly, hotly anticipated. Only one person I heard said they don't think it's going to happen for another year or two. Uh, every other, you know, hundreds of people saying that this thing is coming. Uh, the date to watch for, for the next approval date or the next uh, deadline is January 10th. Uh, but it was so clear that everybody saw the regulatory sands are shifting. The bad actors are gone. That was another big theme uh, with SBF getting uh, his guilty sort of... Um, his jury trial just ended. He's been uh, deemed guilty, uh, the, the founder of FTX. Um, so with all the bad actors gone, everybody's saying there's now room for uh, legitimate actors, right? Which is great. Now all the legitimate actors are going to be able to uh, scoop in capital and manage it much more proper. Um, you know, there were still a lot of skeptics uh, surrounding hacks and, um, you know, surrounding all sorts of um, things that have gone on on chain. Uh, so I think for the people that were voicing skepticism, they kind of pointed at a smart contract risk. Um, but I think a lot of people really ameliorated that and said, you know, smart contract risk is, is going down every day, right? You're seeing less value get drained from smart contracts. A couple other fun facts that I learned, 40 million people own at least $1 worth of Bitcoin, um, or at least 40 million addresses that own at least $1 worth of Bitcoin. And that's, again, a trend that's going higher. Um, I, I learned that, you know, about 40% of the population in South Korea, um, you know, they're very, very deep in these, you know, loyalty points. Um, they're doing it right now where, where basically, you know, you could go you, to Marriott, for example, uh, you stay a night and then you get loyalty points to a network. So you could take those loyalty points from Marriott and go to Starbucks and cash them in, right? So fungible loyalty points. Now those are just an, that's just an example I'm not saying that those companies are involved in this program, uh, but the gentleman uh, who is describing this activity that goes on very, very actively in Asia, particularly South Korea, um, they're bringing this stuff on chain uh, and it's going to be incredible. Um, and then also the amount of hashing power has gone up 3x, guys, 3x since the last peak. So the point there is how much value you can store in Bitcoin is generally relative to how much security there is on the Bitcoin network. So the more miners, the more money you can secure. So the fact that we 3 x the amount of hash power or mining power or security on the Bitcoin network since the last peak, that's saying something. Um, guys, there were MIT researchers present. There was former central bankers present. Everybody was talking about the high risk adjusted returns and the low correlation to other asset classes that crypto offers um, and the last note I'll leave you with was, uh, you know, there was a lot of talk about Bitcoin, of course, but I did hear a couple uh, very, very high net worth individuals talk about the cash flows associated with ETH, Ethereum, and, and some of the DeFi coins uh, that they find more attractive to hold than just Bitcoin. So Bitcoin might have a little bit of the spotlight now, but it won't be forever because there's new burgeoning ecosystems around the corner. Guys, that's my market update from New York City, spending the weekend on Wall Street, had an amazing time, uh, and I hope that you guys uh, learn something from this and you'll stay tuned. Guys, also real quick, if you aren't already subscribed to a service where you could get a, a ton of actionable information, I'm talking uh, you know, live streams, videos, uh, buy zones and sell zones, technical analysis, fundamental analysis uh, from the most plugged in pros in crypto, I highly suggest you come and you follow us, you subscribe for just $1 
You could get a two week trial. You could come, all you can eat is what I say, right? $1 two week trial, click the button below, click the link and you could come and get some incredible information on the crypto market so that we could crush this next bull run together. All right guys, we'll see you inside.